Hey, and welcome to a new photo editing challenge sort of edit. My name is Phil Ebener and I'm from Video School Online and every month we do photo editing challenges for our photography students over in our Photography Masterclass and Friends Facebook group. I'll leave a link below to our courses and to the group if you want to take part and participate. So this month's edit is from Andreas Sauko, this raw photo that was provided on wesaturate.com. Not sponsored, just a great place if you wanna find photos to practice editing. I'm going to be editing this in Lightroom. And just like last week or last month, rather, this is the first time I've looked at this photo and the first time I'm editing it. So this is a really raw sort of, uh, you're seeing the entire process. So without further ado, let's dive right in and start editing. So this photo is really dark right now, but knowing that it's raw, I can go into our basic slider and just really quickly, just to see what's in this photo, I'm going to boost the overall exposure. So still lots of information there. And the first thing I'm going to do, which I do with most of my photos is crop it. I can see this building on the right and this sort of I don't know what this is. It's like the edge of a bridge or something. I want to get rid of those, straighten out some of these buildings just to have a good starting point. So I'm just going to leave my exposure up like that for now. Go into my crop tool. Just going to zoom in just a little bit. So we're at the bottom. We're just getting rid of this building on the right and going in as far as we need to crop out this on the bottom. Looks pretty good to me. Rotation wise, it's actually pretty good. I'm gonna rotate it just very slightly. I'm gonna actually go into our transform tools, I think, because I wanna straighten out these lines a little bit. So that's looking pretty good. It kind of bugs me actually seeing this really, just the railing of that bridge down below. So I'm gonna crop in just a little bit more. Cool, that's looking pretty good. Next, I'm going to go into our transform tools and this is the upright feature. There's some automatic modes where this is great for architecture shots where you're trying to make lines straight. And that does a pretty good job. The lines are, aren't perfect. So I'm actually gonna go off and do it manually. So by clicking this button here and then drawing along the straight lines or the lines you want to be straight vertically or horizontally, Lightroom's automatically going to try to make these lines straight. So I'm going to first draw along this line, which is the one that looks the most off to me, or these few lines up and down here. And then you see nothing happens until I go over and draw another line. And it's going to use the placement of those two lines to say, okay, we're gonna make this straight. Now you can see that these lines are a lot straighter in this building. And I'm just gonna draw one more right here because it's a little bit off. barely does anything and that's looking pretty good cool so now our lines are a lot straighter next I'm gonna go back up to our basic sliders and just play around with the exposure saturation uh, things like that so I reset my exposure and first things first with these basic sliders I'm just gonna bring up the the shadows I definitely want to get some more information in there in the buildings and the street below. I think I'm gonna use a brush in a minute just to brush on some exposure to specific parts because I do like how the buildings are mostly silhouetted. I can go into the blacks and just boost those a little bit as well. You see here this histogram up here, this big hump right here shows us that there's a lot of darks and shadows there. So if I increase this, you can see the histogram actually move over to the right, which is kind of what I'm aiming for. I do like some, like I said, black or silhouetted features, but not everything. Next, I'm just going to look at the highlights and the whites. If I bring up the highlights, see that doesn't do much for me. It just starts to blow out the sky, making it overexposed. So I'm actually gonna bring that down a little bit so that we have more information in that sky. And I'm guessing the whites is gonna do the same thing. So unless you like a super contrasty look like that, I'm gonna bring the whites down just a little bit. Now though, everything looks a little bit too underexposed for me. So I'm just gonna go back up to my overall exposure and boost it just slightly, bringing everything up. I can always fine tune this later with like the tone curve or coming back into here. For this shot, I am going to boost clarity 
for architecture landscapes i like to boost clarity get all that detail there's so much detail in this image already heck we can zoom in here see the taillights of these cars it's pretty incredible d haze i'm just going to boost a little bit just to get some information in that sky actually take that back i'm going to undo that i'm going to use a graduated filter for the sky to make that those colors pop but also to dehaze it there. So I'm not applying dehaze to everything else, including these buildings, which can add a little bit of too much sort of like detail that I don't want actually. In terms of vibrance or saturation, I just, usually I just play around with these just to see what it looks like. Ooh, vibrance, that looks pretty cool. I mean, that's way too much, but usually I go with the vibrance slider, but since this is just a landscape, it's not like a portrait, I'm gonna go with the saturation and boost the saturation just a little bit. I really do wanna make those colors pop. I'm gonna do a little bit more of that with some, some uh, graduated filters and brushes. That looks pretty good. Now, I do just wanna zoom in on here. We don't have too much noise, but I'm gonna go under the detail and add a little bit of noise reduction right here just to smooth out some of that noise. So that's kind of in contrast to the clarity and things that I'm adding, the detail, but I think that looks a little bit better. Cool, so that's a good starting point for us. Next, I'm gonna go in and use some graduated filters and a couple brushes to make the colors really pop in specific parts of this image. All right, so going up to our brush adjustment, first off, I'm just going to double click effect, make sure everything's zeroed out. There's nothing going to be applied. Click on that show selected mask overlay. I'm gonna make my brush a little bit bigger. If you don't see these settings, you can drop down that option. I do like having my feathering up quite a bit. And for now, I'm just going to paint over this road over here on the left-hand side, okay? So just going all the way and maybe even like back here between these buildings. Now, if you get a little bit too much, I can use my eraser and erase some of the edges because I don't want this to be applied to the buildings on the left or right, okay? Just kind of to what's in the middle. Whoops, went a little bit too crazy with it. Let me increase this size just a little bit and just brush over right here. So now to see what we're actually doing, I'm going to turn off our mask overlay. And what I wanna do is boost the warmth of this. So I'm going to take my temperature slider and just drag it to the right. I'm also going to increase the exposure just a bit, starting with just the shadows. Now, if I get too far, it starts to look like I'm kind of just painting on sort of light. So what I can do is just dial that back or sometimes when I increase the shadows, I can decrease the blacks to bring back some of that contrast. Now, overall slight exposure, I'm gonna do a little bit more. So see, if I just went like that, that's crazy, right? So just, that's why you don't wanna go too far with boosting exposure, because then it just looks like completely fake. But I think that looks pretty good. It's, it's definitely a creative edit, but I'm not going for completely unnatural. All right, so doing that makes me feel like I want to do something to the water. The water is a major feature of this landscape, but it's kind of just blends in, nothing special about it. So I'm gonna use a new brush, so clicking new up there. I'm just going to start off by brushing over this river. Like so, let's turn on our mask overlay so we can see what's what we're actually painting on. Okay, we can zoom in, just press the Z key to zoom in, space bar to toggle and hold. And this is looking pretty good, but I don't want whatever I apply to the water to apply to these bridges or to the left or right. So I am going to turn on range mask again for luminance. And I'm just going to increase the range to just more of our highlights. So you can see here that this range slider, I didn't, didn't, um, I haven't really explained this before, but on the left hand side are the darks, on the right hand side are the higher highlights and whites. So by taking the left hand sort of in point, dragging to the right, it means we're only selecting from the middle up to the top. So the middle mid range exposure to the highlights. 
So as you can see that, when I do that, it gets rid of some of the selections of these buildings on the left, the towers of these bridges, and even parts of the these bridges themselves, which is a good starting point, uh, but leaving the, the water to, to have some sort of adjustment. I'm gonna go in here and click erase though and erase the bridge itself. Keeping auto mask on, so this might help a little bit with what I'm trying to do. So I'm just erasing this right here. Auto mask kind of helps me in case I get too close to an edge or something like that. It's gonna say, oh, I know what Phil is trying to do. I'm not trying to get that water. I'm just trying to get this more contrasty part of the bridge. Okay, so this is something along with all kinds of Lightroom stuff is like I could spend so much time going in here and fine tuning it, masking out like the, the boats and things like that. But to save you time, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna get these bridges. Let's just zoom out and I'm just going to get this building on the left hand or the right hand side because I don't want that building to be adjusted. All right, so now you're like, hey, Phil, that, that water looks red, but that's just our mask overlay, right? And so with that off, I'm going to first boost some exposure. So boost the exposure so it is a little bit brighter. Let's actually bring down our blacks, though, to bring back some of that contrast. Now increase saturation. So if I'm like, hey, I just want that natural color boosted, I would just bring up the saturation. But I want to make this even bluer. So I'm going to take my overall temperature and drop it to the left. Mm. What if I want warmth, actually? That looks kind of cool. That kind of adds that sort of highlight from the sunset uh, and the light in the sky. But because I added warmth over here, I like to have some sort of balance to that. So I'm going to add warmth to the right-hand side. So or coolness to the right hand side. So I'm gonna boost the coolness with this temperature slider a little bit, but another way we could add some color to this is with this color box right here. So click this on, and then if we drag this up, we can add color to basically wherever we, we have painted on. And the higher we go, the more color. So I'm just gonna see what this looks like. This means you can kind of pinpoint the exact type of blue that you want to add. Maybe I want it to be a little more blue green, or maybe I do want that sort of magenta purple color. It's not just the Kelvin temperature, light temperature, cool blue. So I can really fine tune this. I kind of like a little bit of that green, but I'm also trying to balance with the sky so that purple is cool. So this is like just like a creative decision I'm gonna make, but that looks pretty good. Now I can see what this looks like if I delete this point and undo it. See how it just adds a little bit of color? Maybe add a little bit more blue just really quickly. A little bit more saturation. Okay, I don't wanna go too far. Sometimes it's good to kinda of look away, walk away, get a snack and come back to see if, hey, that's, that's a little bit too much fill. But I think that looks, looks better. All right, so now the bottom half of this photo looks really good. Now I just want to boost the sky even more. So instead of our brush adjustment, I'm going to use the graduated filter. So I'm going to click on there, make sure everything's set to none. I'll show you my mask overlay. And I'm just going to click and drag down. So by doing that, I'm selecting everything on the top. And that's what this filter is going to apply to. Typically for this, I would put it right at the horizon line. So we're selecting everything in the horizon and maybe a little bit below because the light does fade uh, into the horizon itself, not just the sky. Now I don't want these buildings to be selected as much. So I am going to turn on my luminance range mask and again, just drag up the slider. So we're selecting more of just the highlights, which is really just the sky. You can also play with the smoothness if you want. This can help you make uh, a, a more fine-tuned adjustment. And dragging this down, Lightroom's like, hey, now I really know what you're talking about, Phil. I just want that sky. It does also affect some of these windows on these buildings, which is perfectly fine because this is showing the reflection of the sky, right? So we want it to be selected. 
So that's pretty cool. And what I want to do is really add some warmth. So again, I'll just add this overall warmth slider, but I'm also going to dehaze, which is what I talked about earlier. I'm going to add some dehaze, which adds some detail to the sky. Great for hazy, cloudy days, but also just in general, just to pop out those colors. And then I'm also going to go into my color down here and see if I want to add some specific like red or yellow, something in between. Ooh, yeah, I think I like that more like reddish orange, deep red orange color. Mm, now that's looking pretty cool. I think this is really dramatic and a little bit too much, but now I can tone down some of the other things I add to like this temperature slider up here and maybe even the saturation, just bring it down. See, I have the color that I like, but the strength of that color right now is a little bit too much, okay? So this is, ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. This is, this is exciting. This is what I love about photo editing. So if I click done, I can see my before and after with the backslash key, or I can use my before and after button here. Not that one. That's the compare. This one right here, before and after. Dang, man, this is actually a pretty sick edit if I do say so myself. I hope you're enjoying it. It's definitely creative. Maybe it's not your style. Maybe it's not what you would do with it. But this is one of those ones I look back and I'm like, actually pretty happy with it. So uh, now it's just kind of one of those things I just look back and I could keep fine tuning things. Uh, I think like the, the river itself is one thing where I'm like, oh, maybe I need to add a little bit more magenta to this to match the sky rather than just like the cool blue. Insta so I, I go there, I go here, maybe add a little bit more magenta. Some, ooh, a little bit too much. That's pretty good. Mm, what's, oh yeah, so this is looking a little bit more natural. So I add the magenta through the color feature and the tint, but then instead of the temperature slider being blue, I'm gonna make this warm. So it's adding the same sort of colors of the sky, this gradient from sky down, and it's also matching the, the, the blues of the sky and the, that warmth in the sky as well. I'm really liking this. I am really liking this photo a lot. I don't always say that with my photo edits. And I'm not trying to, you know, be conceited or anything. Maybe this this photo is actually photo edits kind of crappy, but, but I like it. And that's what matters in photography. Okay, so one of the last things I do is go to my tone curve and just this is kind of my last sort of exposure and contrast adjustment. I do typically add a little bit more contrast. And this is just one of those photo edits I'm going completely creative with. This does not, this is not what this photo, this view look like to the photographer. And sometimes that's what you want. Sometimes you want it to look like this is exactly what the scene was. For a lot of wildlife photography, that kind of stuff, nature photography, that's what I'm going for. But for a more creative edit like this, this is what I'm going for, something a little bit more creative. Again, just comparing before and after. Let's go to our basic, just boost the exposure just a little bit. Mm, where was I? Mm, yeah, yeah, just a tiny bit more. Just so that when someone's seeing this on the screen, it's just not too, it's not too dark. Cool. I'm happy with this. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and this challenge. If you are participating uh, and if you are participating, make sure that you post it to the Facebook group as well as Instagram and include the hashtags so that we can easily find them. All those instructions are in the Facebook group that I'll link to if you're not already watching this in the Facebook group. Awesome, Phil Ebener here. I'm excited to, to be back in action with some more tutorials. Let us know if you have any other questions and we'll see you in another video. Have a great day, bye.